here at six. It is the largest project that FDOT has done so far in the Tampa Bay area, and it's going to bring some major changes to how we travel across the bay. It's the new Howard Franklin Bridge. It's a little more now than halfway done. Yeah, and FDOT has some major milestones that it's hit along the way, and I got an up-close look at how it's all going. A lot can change in a year. The biggest difference that people will see in the last year is really just a starting to look more like a bridge. And your ride across the Howard Franklin Bridge is already a little different. We also accomplished a, a traffic shift here on the Pinellas side. Uh, we have moved traffic to the outside so we can start building the um, uh, the interior parts of the um, where the express lanes go. That's FDOT project manager Greg Dees. He updated us on progress for the Howard Franklin Bridge project at the end of 2022. And as we end 2023, he showed us how far it's come along. We're going to be finishing all of our piles this year. That's part of the substructure to support the bridge and the area's quickly collected barnacles. The Florida Department of Transportation started this project in 2020. The number of barges and cranes, we've really peaked uh, nearly 30 cranes and um, over 60 uh, barges uh, that we have out here. And it takes a massive effort to build out the project's 5.8 miles between Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. As far as staff, we're still nearing 300 people directly working on the job um, and then several uh, dozen more working off site, uh, creating the concrete beams, the piles and whatnot. He says the crews are getting better and more efficient as they go. They are doing this over and over again by a lot. We're talking 3,006 piles driven into the bay more than 1,700 beams and pouring 172,000 plus cubic yards of concrete just for a few numbers. This is where the ground will meet the bridge once it's all finished. And you can't see it from where I'm standing now, but up here there's actually about half a mile of deck that's already down and that's where cars will be driving. Drivers will cross a bridge better made to weather hurricanes, adding rock behind the bridge's walls. You saw what happened in Sanibel. Our bridges and causeways are vulnerable. So we're incorporating some um, features features in this bridge that will make it more resilient in the face of storm surge. And using rebar made from fiberglass to fight corrosion. Those will be some of the first time in the state we've seen that. We want to raise our bridges to the point where they won't be affected by wave action uh, during a, a hurricane, and that will ensure that they remain passable um, after a storm passes through. Once completed, the new bridge will carry southbound traffic, including express lanes and a pedestrian path. Then the bridge next to it will switch to northbound traffic, and FDOT will remove the farthest bridge. The department's been really pleased with the progress on this project given the scope of it. Uh, the contractor remains on schedule and we are anticipating switching traffic onto the new bridge by the end of 2024. So we're doing really well. And it all should wrap up by the end of 2025. Now, FDOT says that workers are also preparing the bridge to be able to carry light rail so that if it ever becomes an option in the future, the bridge is designed to handle that weight. The more ways we have to get across that bay, the better. I know. <laughs> it was very, very cool, Mark, to see everything up close because you just don't ever realize the scale that goes into sure. a project like that. I think pedestrians and bikers and joggers are going to love that side path, oh, yeah. too. It's going to be fascinating. I haven't ever had that before on that bridge.